I do have, however, a few things I just want to show you briefly uh, before we go. Uh, it's not my collection of Lego figures. It is a summary of the first five lectures that I've just appended to the end of this lecture. And I will... Uh, this, this is up on QM Plus, so you can download this and have a, have a look through. But I thought it might be useful, because I, I know a number of you uh, have started to think about um, exams and, and what needs to be learned. Now, this is not... I want to stress this is not a crib sheet of things that you need to learn as such. It is, however, a review of the material that we've covered in the first five lectures. So I posted yesterday a, a, a thing, you know, what do you think you've learned? This is what I think has been covered. And it'd be interesting to know if you think we've covered this, if, 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 if you think that the uh, same material has been covered. If, if not, um, that's, that's potentially an issue. So uh, perhaps let me know. Also, not everything is covered in the in sort of on a Thursday morning session. So it is expected that. On the basis of what we cover in these sessions, that you would read extra material, and I have put links on the website, um, the things you should look at. However, when you look at this summary, the emphasis should be on understanding how to use these and how to discuss results. So how to use these things to generate results, when you might use them, and then how you would uh, apply that or how you would use the results that you get to form some form of discussion. Or, the other way around, how you would use these if you read a paper and someone has used one of these, how you might critique that paper and critique someone else's analysis or their conclusions or their discussion, um, and how you would draw your own opinion on the validity of someone else's work, or indeed the applicability of somebody else's work to your own situation. So it's quite. A, I'll just show you the, the stuff that's here, so you get an idea. So I've got direct visualization, frequency tables, histograms, uh, mean mode, median. I didn't actually talk about, but it's, I put it on the on the list. Standard deviation, normal distribution, standard error of the mean, confidence intervals, p-values, null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis, statistical significance, effect size, practical clinical clinical significance, t-test. Mayan Whitney U test, Kolmogorov Smirnov test, Shapiro Wilk test, analysis of variance, Kruskal Wallace test, post hoc Duke test, type 1 error, type 2 te error, power, chi squared test, Pearson product moment, correlation coefficient, and Spearman rank correlation coefficient. I was quite surprised at how much we've managed to squeeze into five, five weeks uh, when I looked back at it. But I've also given you, uh, the w when I've written down limitations and assumptions, that list is not exhaustive. And I would encourage you just to look uh, further at, the, at some literature to try and get a feel for what the assumptions are. They're quite common between many of the tests. But I've just given some indicators there. Um, and you may also find in reading that uh, the purposes of the test. Some authors will claim different purposes, and that's because you can use many of the tests in different ways, depending exactly how you look at it. But I've given you uh, the pro probably the primary purpose of e each of these. But I hope that that's uh, useful. And then finally, uh, there has, uh, I know some, some people were concerned about, um, because it's a statistics, ethics, and research course, um, whether the research material was being covered. I can assure you the research material is, all the necessary research material has been covered. And I think if you talk to people who did this course two years ago, it was different. Then last year there was a real concern over that issue. So it's been remodeled such that there was work, there was a certain material on clinical governance that may have been covered in induction week, but it won't be examined. So, we're, it, it, 
and the reason for that is it's very UK specific. So it's useful information. It's information that you should be aware of if doing clinical research within the UK. But um, those of us who organised this course didn't feel that it was something that made any sense to examine people on because um, research governance and UK law, it, well, one, it will change, and two, it's not generally applicable um, to, m to most, most people most of the time. Uh, so instead, the research component focuses on, on these aspects. Introduc um, introducing research, what an introduction to research uh, entails, um, structuring written research, and, and what things should be written within each part of the structure. So I suggest, again, this isn't exhaustive, and there are uh, gray areas in this, so I, I've written my suggestions here. Um, so introduction would cover so why you're doing the research, previous literature, what the, the current level of knowledge, um, and what your question is. Materials and methods is specifically what you're testing, um, what you're actually trying to answer with this specific piece of research, and how you're going to do that, and how you're going to analyse it, or how you did analyse it. And then results are simply statements of what you found. They're just statements. You really don't do any uh, analytical interpretation of, in a results section. You just say, well, this is what I can see. Well, this is what um, everything, this is what everything uh, I've done says. These are my p-values. This is what I think the data looks like. So a little bit of interpretation, perhaps. But nothing too substantive. And the main thing comes down to discussion. Uh, what are your main findings, interpretation, of all of the results put together, including uh, the way that you collected the data, how that might impact upon the way that the tests report their answers, the likely variation in the test, why or why not you uh, would believe the results, any justifications that you feel you need to put in. Often you're preempting reviewer questions. So if you're submitting a paper or indeed going for a viva examination, you're preempting the kinds of questions that someone might ask you. But I've also put in a couple of extra links, or three extra links, uh, to what other people think research, um, how, how you should structure research. But I'd like to stress that it's statistics and research, and statistics forms an integral part of research as opposed to being a separate discipline. And that's why these two uh, key elements are, are integrated within this course. So if you feel that it's not, research explicitly isn't being taught as a subject in isolation, that's because the two, um, at least for the purposes of this course, are seen as integral, and, um, uh, integral rather than discrete entities. Hopefully, that's at least given you some food for thought. Um, and I'm going to end it now, and I shall see you next week. <laughs>